Calder, I really don't think that's necessary for the video. I don't think you're in a position to tell me what's necessary for the video. Hey guys, welcome back to Dial H. I'm Calder Ness. Today we're going to go over a crazy cool team that we just thought of and we figured it could spawn a brand new team building series. Now this team is not budget friendly, so it's not really super new player friendly, but it is fringe competitive, which means if you have any cool competitive tournaments coming up in 300 Modern Age, this could be the team for you. Now the goal of the team, get as many chainsaws out on the board, as much as possible and as effective as possible, so we can start rolling some dice and getting all sorts of cool chainsaw construct kills. Now let's go ahead and look in this team and see how we make that possible. All right, we know the goal of the team, get across the map, drop a bunch of chainsaws, and do this as effectively as possible. So, what makes it all work together? Let's go down the team, shall we? Iron Spider, first up, he's the linchpin. He's the guy that gives everybody on the force Sinister Syndicate team ability, which is gonna allow us to share our attack value to make sure the chainsaws are rocking a little bit higher than a tat attack. We'll get into more of that later. He also has the extra utility of being able to shut off equipment, opposing equipment, within his range if he succeeds on a leadership role. Chip, Star Sapphire, and Saint Walker. Those are chainsaw choppers, baby. That's the money right here. It's the meat and potatoes of the team. They drop chainsaws. They can drop their other constructs too, but they're here to rev up the saw. That's, that's their whole point. Megat is also a great bystander dropper. He can drop an autonomous bystander. He gives us exploit weakness or poison, which is something the chainsaws don't have, so he helps fill a gap there, which is really nice. Flash, another linchpin part of the team, him and Iron Spider. Flash has a 12 attack that all of our chainsaws can borrow. Giving him plus two attack is absolutely insane. Plus, Flash is gonna be our carry piece. He's gonna copy the Green Lantern team ability and carry our entire team all the way across the map. Now, what helps the gas for the taxi, what helps get Flash across the map? That's Tempo. I love Tempo, I think she's super underplayed. She not only has prop, but can shut off oppos opposing super senses when she's adjacent to them, and she gives any character either plus three or minus three speed. Spoiler alert, she's given Flash plus three speed so we can get all the way across the map. Sakari and Iron Man, why is he here? Holy smokes, he's just so good. <laughs> we had 55 points left. He's insane. He's another great attacker for the team. He gives us access to a lot of amazing powers. We'll get more on him later. And then Carnage is awesome. Carnage is gonna be used for a little bit of utility, but also he helps the team out a ton because he can drop his own chainsaw later if you maybe hit a Mystics character or something, you can activate Retail and then he'll drop his blades. And that's the full team right now. Let's go ahead and jump into their utility and get a little more specific. So now that we know everybody's role on the team, let's go ahead and get into their added utility and what they have to offer. So we have three uses of probability control on this team. That's gonna be Chip, Tempo, and Megat, which is huge. We also have two uses of Outwit. Sakarian Iron Man and Iron Spider are both bringing that to our team, as well as Sakarian Iron Man is giving us a use of Perplex. Empower from St. Walker can help our first attack with Flash and our next attack whenever we want to use a Megat Bystander. Although his Empower will not be able to affect the Chainsaws, he doesn't really need it because he can actually give the Chainsaws an additional damage due to his cool trait that lets you be able to roll a critical hit on an 11. And when you're dropping three Chainsaws, that's six attacks and three uses of probability control, you have pretty high chances of actually rolling an 11, which is pretty awesome to help get these crit hits off. And then the Flash also has the Emotional Modifier. That's useful in a variety of ways. If you don't know what the Emo Mod does, the biggest ones are you can minus the defense value of opposing characters within range, which is huge. So that makes all our Chainsaws even better to attack somebody. Or we can give them all Battle Fury, and that way not only are we shutting off Super Senses with Tempo, but now we have Battle Fury, we're shutting off Shape Change, and there are no more rollouts except just Impervious at this point, or a Blades rollout from an Apocalypse or Genesis, which is amazing. So, the biggest pro, we have Flash carrying everybody across the map. Flash gets to charge twice, so you have his speed. He's at seven, then plus three from tempo, which is 10 squares each charge. So he's got a 20 square movement carrying your entire team, which is amazing. So he gets up there, he gets to make a punch himself. He'll be a 13 for four, so that's already awesome. Next up, you drop three chainsaws, drop a megat, right? So you're making eight attacks in one turn. It's really huge, there's a lot of great offense here. Here's the rough part a little bit. It's very weak, all right? There's not a lot of defense reducers on this team. It's very glass candy. Things like Pulse Wave, Quake, Energy Explosion, 
can do a lot to damage and take out a bunch of this team. So just be really weary of that. You want to make sure your first attack, your alpha strike, when you're coming across the map, you've got to land attacks. You've got to choose good targets. You've got to KO enough of their team that they don't really have much legs to stand on if they have a turn after you're done with them. With that in mind, let's go ahead and move into how we set up on both maps, small maps and large maps, to make this Alpha Strike team work its best. So if you do win map, I highly recommend a larger map because Flash has the reach and usually your opponent probably won't. So let's go ahead and look at our optimal map choice and our setup. Setup, again, is very, very basic. Everybody needs to be adjacent to Flash. We can go ahead and afford Maggot not to be adjacent because he has a sidestep and he can easily get next to Flash, his sidestep not as important as Chips or Star Sapphires because their sidesteps have flight. You want to have at least two light objects next to Sakari and Iron Man so we can easily pick those up right away. And now let's go ahead and look what a Flash Alpha Strike on the Scooby Gang is going to look like. First, he gets to have his speed because of charge and modify plus three thanks to tempo. So, First one, we'll go 10 squares to there. The setup doesn't really matter right here because he can't really make an attack. So we'll just go ahead and place everyone like so for right now. And then the second move, he can get all the way to the opponent's starting area. So we're going to move him like that there. We're going to use Tempo here to shut off Scooby-Doo's Super Senses and also get a prop on the attack. We're going to want St. Walker to have Line of Fire to the Flash. We're going to go ahead and leave Iron Spider behind for right now. There will be different times when you want to take him with, like if your opponent has really important equipment that you need to shut off. But for right now, we're just going to leave him there. We'll go ahead and put Mega there, Sir Sapphire there, and Chip right there. This is going to get us two probability controls on Flash's attack. He'll make his attack, and this is probably what it's going to look like afterwards. And actually, we can shift everything down. And we'll have Chip sidestep here. He can go ahead and carry Flash and Tempo. Maybe we didn't use Tempo's prob. Maybe we still want her to be adjacent to some characters on your opposing team. So she can go ahead and go right there. That'll be totally fine. If we have the space, we can have Megat sidestep away. There's all sorts of different sidesteps you can use. We still have Star Sapphire sidestep, etc., etc. But this creates a pocket for us to drop all of our chainsaws. And we can drop Megat's bystander over here. We can also change it if we want Megat to maybe be over here tempo over there for the initial attack that way his bystander is also adjacent to flash it just kind of depends on how you want your setup to be but for right now all three of these bystanders star sapphires here saint walkers here and then chips here can all be adjacent to flash for an attack giving them a 12 attack roll chip will have a prob on it maggot will have a prob on it and then tempo will also have a prob on it if you didn't use any of theirs before now let's go ahead and look and what it's going to look like on a non-optimal map, like a small map. And here's what our setup is going to look like on a smaller map. If you'll notice, we can use the first two rows instead of just the back edge of our starting area. The reason for this is Carnage is a 2x2 two two and he instantly expands our starting area. He'll also technically expand your opponent's starting area, so just be careful of that. But the biggest plus this gives us is getting more people adjacent to Flash without, without having to waste sidesteps and carries and whatnot. The biggest reason I want Star Sapphire and the other Lanterns off to the side is they can drop things like the stop sign that can give us barrier. Star Sapphire herself also already has barrier, so that can help protect you if you're not able to go first or if you're in a position to play more defensive. We also want Megat off to the side and not adjacent to Flash because he has sidestep anyways, so he can just sidestep up to here to then get carried. His sidestep isn't as important as Star Sapphire and Chips because they can sidestep and carry, which is just way more important once we get into our positioning later down the line. For Sakarian Iron Man, you're just only going to have two objects, one of his Sakarian normal objects, and then one object that you'll pay for on your force. Uh, those just to get him started right away, not super important. So now, what's this going to look like? So Tempo is going to give Flash a plus three to speed. He's going to move up 10 squares to somewhere around here. His first charge doesn't matter a ton because he isn't really able to make an attack. You can go ahead and carry the full team. Again, placement here doesn't matter that much because then you're instantly just going to do a second charge. And so if Flash wants to make an attack, we can very easily do that. We'll charge. And keep in mind, you will place everybody before you make an attack. So we're going to want Line of Fire from St. Walker. I'm going to want Star Sapphire there. I'm going to want Megat here. 
Chip definitely there, and we're gonna leave Iron Spider behind and bring Tempo. Why are we bringing Tempo? Now we have Line of Fire to almost all of our probs. We're gonna not have Line of Fire from Chip, but Tempo is gonna go ahead and shut off the Super Senses on Scooby-Doo, who Flash is going to attack. So that will end the action right there. And then we'll just simply sidestep right here, carrying both Flash and Tempo with Chip now, hopefully we haven't had to use any other super senses or any other probs yet, because now we have a few different rerolls on our chainsaws. This creates our chainsaw pocket. Star Sapphire, compared her's there. Saint Walker is there. Chip, right there. They'll all be adjacent to Flash, all taking his 12 attack. After that's done, you can even have Star Sapphire sidestep back. You can have Megat go here, and then there's a spot for Megat's bystander right there who is going to have line of fire to St. Walker, who's going to give him a plus one attack and damage value, potential poison, potential exploit. But this is basically going to be the setup because you want as much stuff adjacent to Flash as possible. Now, guys, obviously there is a ton you can do with this team that we didn't exactly get into. We didn't get into barrier tech and what to do with that. But the constructs have a lot of answers to any problems you may potentially see. So things like barrier, weird map choices with a lot of blocking or opponent placement, things like that we didn't really get into, but just mess around with the team, play it, see what you like about it, see what you can maybe even improve about it. We didn't really get into a lot of stuff that Sakari and Iron Man can do, but he is a huge part of this team, just being a, a very tough figure for your opponent to have to deal with, to have to take down. It does a lot. This team does literally so many things, but the best part and the main focus that I want to get across is you got 12 attack chainsaws, minus one defenses on your opponents. You're making six chainsaw attacks in a turn with blades, plus the potential crit of a St. Walker. That's, that is upwards of 50 damage in one turn, guys. It's so awesome. Like literally everything goes right. You're doing insane amounts of damage and it's just super, super fun. So let us know, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and tell us in the comment section below if you played this team. Like always guys, happy trade. Calder, seriously, put the chainsaw down. What is your problem with the chainsaw, bro?